Welcome to the Pub Sports Radio College Basketball Closing Time Show for Friday, March 5th. Ian Cameron, Connor Mack, ready to break down Friday college basketball action. That's right. This is our first Friday show of the college basketball season. We have expanded to well seven days a week as long as there's games that day. There's going to be the odd uh, day in the month of March where there's no college basketball taking place. Those days we won't have a show. But every other day that there's college basketball games, we're going to be here. Uh, on the Pub Sports Radio College Basketball Closing Time Show. Today's our last 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific time slot edition of the show, starting tomorrow on Saturday. And every episode of this show, the rest of the season, will be at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. We want to get all the games in, or as many of them as possible. We're going to have a lot of afternoon basketball next week in conference tournament action when the major conferences begin. Certainly in the NCAA tournament, there'll be afternoon games. So that's why we're starting the show early the rest of the season starting tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. So make sure you join us for that each and every day right here on the Pub Sports Radio YouTube channel. Uh, Connor, let's get into it. Friday card, St. Peter's Quinnipiac. Uh, back to the Metro Atlantic. A couple of rematch situations in this conference uh, this is one of them. Uh, St. Peter's three and a half point road favorites, 131 the total uh, in this game. St. Peter's just a colossal meltdown in the second half. They had a really strong start uh, against the Bobcats yesterday. Uh, and then Quinnipiac caught fire in St. Peter's, despite you know having a pretty solid team in the backcourt and guys in the inside that can produce. Their offense just completely went dormant uh, in the second half against Quinnipiac. But I like this setup for St. Peter's. They're still the better of these two teams, in my opinion, even after a tough second half that resulted in a loss yesterday. And the Metro Atlantic has been one of those conferences this year where betting the team that lost the first meeting has been very good against the spread. Excellent, in fact. I think close to, if not above 60% winners, ATS backing the team that lost the first meeting uh, in these rematch situations in the Metro Atlantic, that angle says to take St. Peter's here, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. In fact, you've actually got right around the same number as yesterday's game. No adjustment. I expect the uh, Peacocks to be a lot better, sharper, maybe more focused. Maybe they took their foot off the gas when they got that quick start, quick jump on Quinnipiac yesterday. Uh, I think they uh, get redemption today. I'll back St. Peter's here, minus three and a half to get the win in the cover. Uh, C-Mac, how about you, St. Peter's, Quinnipiac? I agree. I think St. Peter's is better. Uh, they kind of, yeah, folded yesterday. I think they're the better team. Um, so, yeah, uh, I have a small bet. I'm going to play the three and a half with St. Peter's. I think they get the cover here. All right, like in St. Peter's as well, we move on. Uh, we've got uh, Monmouth Ryder. This was a crazy game. Went to overtime yesterday. Monmouth with a buzzer beater in overtime to get the win over Ryder. Uh, Riders on the Storm. storm. Uh, the old Doors yeah. song. You remember that? Uh, Jim Morrison. What a band that was. Uh, Monmouth, five and a half point road favorites. Uh, total 153 and a half uh, in this game. Uh, there might be value over the total in this game because it's a lower number. That total yesterday mm -hmm. closed 158 and it never came close to that total. And now we've seen the total for the rematch here drop by four and a half points. That's why I think there's value. And sometimes when those games stay under, and it stayed under even with overtime, that game was an under even after the, the game ended in overtime yesterday. So it was a very much lower scoring game than the projected total uh, that was put out there by odds makers indicated. I think you get better shooting now, maybe tired legs on defense in this game for both teams that both went to overtime yesterday. So I do think there's a little value now to play this game up and over the total. I was set to bet on Monmouth had they lost yesterday because, again, they're the better team. They were in danger of losing, but they pulled it out. That Metro Atlantic bounce-back angle that has been so profitable this year, to say, which says back the team that lost the previous meeting, says to take Ryder here, plus 5.5 because they lost to Monmouth. But Monmouth's the better team. I don't do the revenge angle if I don't think they're the better team, and I don't think Ryder's better than Monmouth. So I'm staying off the game from a side perspective, but I do have a small play over the total. C-Mac, how about you, Monmouth Ryder? Yeah, I don't have a real feel for this one because it went to OT, um, and Mom that just won. I, I don't know. I if I had to, I guess I'd take the points with Ryder. I think Mom is a better team. They got the win yesterday. I think they could maybe get the win again. I don't want to lay five and a half. It's just a little bit too much. These teams are too. I can't trust them enough. There's too much. You know, these. You know, <laughs> I talked about it yesterday a little bit. The Riders, the Quinnipiacs. 
I don't feel safe, especially betting a lot, you know, a good chunk of change on them. Uh, they'll drive you nuts sometimes watching their basketball. <laughs> a lot of, you know, sometimes turnovers, it's not real clean. So I'm going to stay off this one. But I agree a little bit with the over. I think it could get up and over the total. All right, we keep on uh, moving on down the uh, card. We've, we're doing all the regular season games, by the way, first. We'll get to the fun stuff, uh, a.k.a. the conference tournament games uh, very soon in just a bit. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Northern Illinois, Central Michigan. Central Michigan, five-point home favorites, 146, the total in this one. I mean, I'm tempted to take Northern Illinois. I, Central Michigan laying points. I mean, you got to be bleeping me, as Hawk Harrelson, the uh, longtime White Sox broadcaster, would say. Uh, no way am I laying with the Chippewas here. So, you know, Northern Illinois nails on a chalkboard offense. I get it. They're, they've been dreadful. This is just more of I can't buy into this favorite. That uh, not that I'm rushing to back NIU, but I'd have uh, given the choice, I'd take them here. Not not a game I bet, but lean NIU here. Uh, Connor, what do you think? Yeah, this wasn't a, speaking of Hawk. This isn't a can of corn, as he would say. Uh, yeah, Central Michigan laying laying the <laughs> no, five and a half. This game, this is just a lazy yeah. can of corn. Yeah, sleepy yeah. can of corn. Yeah. Uh, I'd still lean Central Michigan, but I don't love laying five and a half. I got to stay off. I don't know if he'll – I think he'll get over. Northern Illinois has been playing better, but I don't know. I think the total is right about there. Um, so nothing on this one. I, I just passed. All right. Next up, we've got uh, Kent State Buffalo. Buffalo, five, five-and-a-half point home favorites, 154-and-a-half the total uh, in this game. Kent State's a little banged up going into this game. I think Buffalo might take take advantage of that. I'd, I, I kind of like Buffalo. Small bet for me on Buffalo here in this game, as well as the over. Uh, defensive. The Buffalo seems to really crank their up their offense and even play a, their possession numbers actually go up a little bit at home compared to on the road. Total's been bet up from one fifty two and a half to one fifty four and a half. I agree with that move. So to me, it's favored and over in this one. Uh, Connor, what are your thoughts here? Kent State Buffalo. Yeah, this one's uh, a tough one. Kent State has been playing pretty well, and I believe they beat Buffalo earlier in the year. Let me double check. Sorry, I had my thing. My computer froze up. I'm using my phone. I think they beat him earlier in the year, 84-81. I had that in my notes. But it was, yeah. I think this one – yeah, okay, that's what I thought. I think this one could be close. Um, it's at Buffalo. Uh, I think they do play better on the road. That weird number of five and a half, and Buffalo doesn't shoot free throws too well. Um, Kent State's a little better team that way. I'm a little scared of that. I mean, if I had you, I, I'd take Kent State in the five and a half. And I'm with you. I think Buffalo over, and I think it's pretty much – Kent State can play a lower game, but when they play Buffalo and Toledo, these high, they play up with them. They score with them. So I'm in agreement. I think the total's probably about right, but I think they can get over 154. I think we could both get to 80 just about. Um, it got there. It was a little higher, 159. Uh, I think in that Toledo, what was it, Central Michigan game, it just got over by a half a point. I see one of those. I think this one's close, and I think it can get over the total here. I agree. Uh, liking the over as well. Uh, next up, Fairfield, Manhattan. Fairfield, uh, Manhattan, rather, four and a half point home favorites, 124 the total. Again, Metro Atlantic game. Again, that revenge angle that's been very profitable. We're talking about hitting 60% winners with this, betting the team that lost the first game. That would be Fairfield here. Uh, they lost to Manhattan yesterday. Fairfield was just god-awful, garbage, horrendous, hideous Amazing team. Early season. But they've been a lot more competitive. They've been a little bit better. They've even pulled off some surprising wins in the conference play lately. Manhattan. It was a pretty close game most of the way against Fairfield, but they pulled away down the stretch to get the win and the point spread cover. I think Fairfield's not a bad side to go with here, getting four and a half in the short turnaround revenge situation. Manhattan's still one of those teams that has been inconsistent, to say the least, when they've been installed as favorites throughout the course of the season. Uh, Connor, what do you think here, Fairfield, Manhattan? I'm with you. These teams are very, I think, evenly matched, and Manhattan – Got the win. Fairfield shot it horrible yesterday. So I'm on the revenge angle, too. I think they outright win today, at, at least cover. So definitely give me a Fairfield plus the four and a half. And if you want to a little bit, I think they might win it. So if you like it, maybe you want to put a little on the money line as well. All right, good stuff. Yeah, the Billikens uh, are on their way to a win uh, over UMass. Uh, it looks like they're going to cover the number as well. Uh, they're up pretty comfortably uh, in that game. 
uh, right now, 85 to 70 uh, with a minute 20 to go uh, in that one. So St. Louis, if you laid the seven and a half with the Billikens, looks like uh, they're on their way uh, to a point spread cover. The game's already gone over the total, which makes me happy. That was my bet uh, on that game, UMass and uh, St. Louis. All right, next up we've got, um, let's see here, Boston College, Miami. Miami, four-point home favorites, 143 the total. Can't back Boston College. I mean, it's just the, you know, the roof is completely uh, caved in for this team. They've already dismissed Jim Christian, you know, as head coach of the program. Uh, just a team that's had a freaking awful season. Miami, though, it's a little leap of faith. This is a game they should win. It's probably a game they should cover and win by margin as well. But Miami, we know, has been battling injuries, battling a shorthanded, depleted roster, no bench whatsoever for Jim Laranaga's squad. Maybe it doesn't, won't matter here, though, when you're playing this Boston College team. But, yeah, if I were given the choice, this is another game I'm passing on, but if I had to, if I had to bet one side or the other, it's clearly for me the Canes are nothing at all. Connor, what about you, BC, Miami? It's crazy to say. I guess I lean the Canes. I mean, they have just depleted here. But when they were still a little bit healthier, they got blown out at Boston College January 12th by 22. I think they remember that. That's why if I had to go here, I'd lean with Miami, even with the depleted, nobody out there. Just small. I'm not betting it, but free pick if I had one I'd lean with Miami I think they remember getting their ass whipped and uh, by BC so a couple months ago so yeah. I would uh I would lay it cautiously with Miami with the four all right MTSU FAU FAU 10 point home favorites 138 the total uh, these teams played last night not pretty for middle Tennessee uh I don't trust Bill. Like I like to <laughs> yeah. like, like make a case for the team that lost the previous game, but they've just had a really tough time. Their offense is dormant. That game stayed under, by the way. It was a good call uh, under the total. I would lean under right again. What, what's going to change in 24 hours? Middle Tennessee is going to finally shoot straight when they haven't for several games in a row. I don't know. Uh, for me, it favored and under, just like yesterday. If I were betting this game, that's where I'd look. Uh, what about you, Connor? Yep, <laughs> that's what I had wrote down too. I had FAU yesterday, and the other, I just wrote the same because usually I look towards, especially team catching ten, and they could play better, and maybe they're better is still losing by fifteen instead of thirty. <laughs> but that means FAU cover, and uh, yeah, I lean towards the under Middle Tennessee. They, they just can't score. They just cannot score the basketball. They have the roughest time getting it in the hoop. So yeah, I'd only look that way again. All right, next game on the uh, docket here as we continue on down the uh, rundown. Uh, we've got uh, Hawaii, uh, UC Davis. Uh, UC Davis, three-point home favorites, 139.5 the total. Uh, this is the ultimate pace battle. Cal Davis played pretty slow. Hawaii doesn't mind getting up and down the floor. It's who's going to uh, win out in this game is the question. You got Hawaii, of course, going to the mainland now uh, for this game uh, against Davis. Davis has taken the money. I kind of lean that way uh, with Davis. You know, Hawaii's not been necessarily covering numbers consistently of late. Uh, I think they're a little bit better defensive team, Davis, as well. So I lean UC Davis. Didn't get involved, but I lean to UCD. What about you, Connor? Yeah, I didn't get involved either. I lean with Davis as well. I like Hawaii at home. You know, I like them. At, yeah, not on the mainland. Um, I like them at home. So in this spot, it's a tough one. It's just a small lean. Um, I think Hawaii's been pretty good. I've bet them a fair amount of times this year and been uh, pretty successful. It's a tough one. I'm going to stay off because I'm worried Hawaii could stay in this one. But Davis has been hot as of late. Um, so it's just a small lean uh, with Davis here. All right, next game uh, on this uh, slate as we go on down the card. Our first – it kind of feels funny doing a show on Friday for this uh, college basketball yep. We haven't done one but uh, this year, but uh, it's it's good. It's that time of year. we got to give you shows and break down as many games as possible here in March. Canisius, Canisius and Siena. We've got Siena, six-point home favorites, 140 the total. Again, once again, broken record. Metro Atlantic, revenging team, Canisius. And I think Canisius is the play here, plus six. And, I, and look, that game was tight. It was close. It was competitive. And then Siena just got a little bit of separation in the final minute or two, which got them the point spread cover and barely – they were laying six yesterday, and they won by seven, seven. against yeah. Canisius. I like Canisius here. This is still a Siena team that has struggled to cover numbers, especially as favorites. Rivalry game, Canisius brings it, and I think they might even win here, but I think at least show up, 
be good again, be sound. And I don't trust Sienna as chalk. They escaped by the skin of their teeth with a point spread cover yesterday, but I'm coming back with Canisius here, plus six. Lean over as well. Connor, how about you? Canisius, Sienna. Yeah, Sienna, I think, is overvalued. They just got the cover, seven. I stayed off. I think I'm going to bet this tonight. We still got some time here today. I think I'm going to have a small bet on Canisius. I think they cover today and maybe outright win. Yeah, Sienna, very lucky there in that game uh, to get that cover if you had Sienna. So I'd look the other way uh, tonight. Sienna's a damn good team, don't get me wrong. They're one of the top teams in the Metro Atlantic. Watch out. They could win the tournament coming up when it starts yeah. next week, the conference tournament. But they've been overvalued, and that's sometimes what you get. You know, Prior to today, when they blew out Southern Illinois, earlier today, Loyola Chicago had actually lost four straight against the spread. You know, that's they, yes. another example. They had been a little overvalued of late, but uh, finally they got the job done uh, with the uh, win there, or the point big cover today, I should say, against uh, uh, Southern Illinois in the Missouri Valley uh, tournament game. Uh, Ball State Toledo. We've got Toledo, nine, nine and a half point home favorites, 155 and a half the total. The Ball State money has come in here uh, on this game uh, to begin with. I don't know. They haven't shown me enough on the road. I mean, you're talking about a Toledo team that's 11 and one straight up at home. Nine and three against the spread. They've been outstanding uh, on home on their home court this year. Ball State on the road when step up in class. What have they done? They lost by ten at Miami of O. Lost by eight at Ohio. Lost by thirty two at Akron. And I know they've won three in a row, but they did it against Kent at home and then two garbage teams, Central and Eastern Michigan. The directional Michigan schools suck in this conference this year. They absolutely blow. Central, Michigan, uh, Central, Eastern, Western, it doesn't matter. If there was a Northern Michigan, they'd probably suck too, you know, at this rate. Uh, right now in this <laughs> like they all stink. So we're yeah. going to give my all state a big pat on the back for beating those crap teams. I'm not doing that. I don't understand the move. Um, if it comes down a little further, I'm on ball, uh, Toledo here. Look what they've done at home. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. Look, I've, Western Michigan, the last home game, it was 91-44 for Toledo. They just wiped the floor with them. They beat Akron by 15. Okay, they lost to Bowling Green at home, but that's a good team. Bowling Green's playing their best ball right now. They beat Miami of O by 12 points at home and covered. I don't get the line move here. For me, it would be Toledo laying the points. What do you think, Connor? Yeah, this is a little bit of a tough one. Toledo had the bad loss, but they're so good at home. They're, they're so good off a loss. Like you said, Ball State beat up on some bad teams. Yeah, they've played better. And most of that was at home. And we'll see what they can do here tonight. I I agree with you. I, I, I got with Toledo here. If it drops a little more to eight, it's a lean. I haven't bet it. But I, I think they bounce back and play better. Every time they've had a kind of a bad game, they went through that great stretch earlier on the year. Yeah, you know, they were like 12-2 and two to start the year against the spread. They kind of came back to earth, had some losses. But – I think after a loss at home, they bounce back. I think they can win by more than 10. So I definitely lean with Toledo here. All right. We got uh, Cal Riverside and Cal State Northridge. We've got the uh, Matadors here uh, of CS Northridge. Uh, not, uh, nine point home underdogs here, 147 the total against Riverside. Um, kind of a rivalry here. Like Riverside's clearly superior team. They're a very good basketball team in the Big West Conference this year, no question. But it's a rivalry kind of game. Northridge is terrible defensively, but they could score a little bit. Kind of interesting to get nine points with them. I'm leaning that way. Battle of pace. I think if if you're if you like Northridge, you like over. I think if you like Riverside, you like under because they're going to try to slow it down a little bit. But a lot of people believe, and they're not going to be able to slow it down because this total has gone up four points from 143 to 147. Uh, Devin's gotten involved yet, but I'm leaning a little bit to Northridge here at home. Uh, what do you think, C Mac? Riverside, Northridge. Yeah, I agree with the move with the over, but it's kind of gotten up there. Northridge, I haven't got a feel with them. They had some bad injuries in the middle of the year, still dealing with the guys in and out. And they've been hit and miss, you know, on, on these games back-to-back -back lately. They've been win one, get blown out uh, to Bakersfield. Just not a good read with them. I So I can't take them. I'd lean towards the nine. Riverside has played better all year, more consistent. But laying almost double digits on the road, I'd be careful um, taking them tonight. All right. Uh, next game on the Ed slate, we've got, uh, as we uh, bring it up here, uh, Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan. Wow. Uh, pick your poison here. Western Michigan, two, yeah. two and a half point old favorites, 134. I don't know about you, but I don't like poison. 
It doesn't taste good. It could kill me. So for that reason, I'm passing on this game. There's my analysis. Uh, seriously, I mean, I can't trust either one of these teams right now. Are you kidding me? On a day where there's so many conference tournament games and uh, other bigger, uh, more uh, enticing games on the schedule, no, no need to get involved here. What do you think, C-Mac? Are you on board yeah. here? No way. I mean, you're going to tell me I'm going to lay two and a half points with Western Michigan? Get the hell out of here. And I don't feel safe taking two and a half. I mean, if I had, you know, gun to the head, if I had to, I'd take Eastern and the two and a half because yeah. Western Michigan laying two and a half. I Both are very bad. I just pass. <laughs> All right, Cal Thanks. Irvine, Long Beach State. We've got uh, Irvine, eight and a half point road favorites, 144 the total. Uh, they got off to a dreadful start, the Long Beach State. Uh, team and uh, you know Dan Monson the longtime head coach said we had no practice time you remember way back in the season he said it's like we're just seeing each other on the court for the first time and they've kind of started the season that way lo and behold they're starting to perk up a little bit they're being more competitive they've been a little bit of an ATS darling their last few games they've started covering some numbers I kind of like them here eight and a half getting this kind of number I, Irvine's good don't get me wrong but Irvine in this road chalk roll spotty uh, Long Beach State to me is the value uh, I'm leaning in that direction. What do you think, Connor? Yeah, this is a tough one for me. I think Irvine is way better here, but I just don't like laying eight and a half here on the road. And you're right, the Beaches, they struggled to start the year. They've been playing better of late, pass on this game as well. Just a a tough number. Irvine's yeah. better, but you, you got you know, they gotta win by ten on the road. Look maybe another game. Don't love it. If I had to, I'd take the be- I'd take the home team with the Long Beach here in the eight and a half. Okay. Dayton VCU is just start about to start in the Atlantic 10 conference tournament quarterfinals. So we've got we've got to jump in and talk this game now. I have Dayton here plus four uh, against VCU. I said I didn't well I didn't did I did we talk Dayton? I think we did. Yeah yesterday that uh, Dayton was an undervalued team. They're an underseeded seven seed. They're healthy now. The one thing that bothers me now after watching these first two quarterfinals is the teams that played yesterday facing the teams that are rested got blown out. You know, yeah. UMass got blown out. Duquesne got blown out. So I worry a little about that, but this is value on Dayton. Dayton is performing now like the one of the better teams that they, they, they were supposed to be in the Atlantic 10. It's not going to be easy against VCU going into this one, but I like this team the way they're going. Jalen Crutcher now is Rodney Chapman back. Uh, Ibby Watson's been outstanding lately for Dayton. Playing their best ball right now. under as a seven seed. I like Dayton plus four. I like over the total there, 134. And I think VCU with their press and that style, they're going to really try to speed it up with a Dayton team that had played yesterday. Try to get them to speed up, get tired, wear them out. And I think that plays into the over as well. So I like Dayton. I like over there. Uh, Connor, did you do anything with this game that's just about to tip off? 8-10 quarterfinal here, Dayton VCU. I do. I got a small bet with Dayton plus four. And my main concern, though, a little bit was the rest of the team against the team that just played, like Dayton. But I think they're they're similar. Dayton's kind of playing their best basketball that I've seen all year. Real struggle uh, to get going. VCU, you know, just lost to Davidson. It was just okay team uh, by eight. They did beat St. Louis, but they were coming off kind of their layoff. Then and they lost to George Mason. So two out of three, of their last they've lost. They're okay, and they haven't. They've games with them have been really close all year. So in a spot like this, they could be rested and cover this. But they've been winners of two or three or losers. The games are very close. So if this one's close, I want the points, and that's why I took Dayton in the plus four. All right, we'll get to the rest of the conference tournaments later on. Uh, we'll go back to the regular season board now. Charlotte and Marshall. Marshall, 12 and a half point home favorites, 138 the total. Per, that's I'm tempted with over anytime I see Marshall, 130s. That's a pretty damn low total for Marshall at home. Like, I know Charlotte is a ter- not a good offensive team, a good defensive team, a snail pace team. But Marshall, usually the home team's got the better chance to dictate the pace, dictate the terms. I think Marshall can do that. And I think the the number to me could have been in the 140s. It's not. It's 138. I think Marshall can pull an over out of Charlotte here. That's the way I'm going. I'm not uh, touching the side, but I do like the over. 138 in a Marshall game to me is too low. What do you think, Connor? Yeah, I didn't like anything about this. I think it's Marshall's better, but I don't think they should be laying 12. And, yeah, in a Marshall game, you look towards the over. I'm going to stay off that as well. I don't know if Charlotte can score enough. Um, I think they can get there at 139, but I'm going to pass. 
All right, next game we've got uh, is Georgia Tech Wake Forest. Georgia Tech, eight and a half point road favorites, 136 the total. Yeah, I can't, I'm done with Wake. I'm sorry. As much as I've backed Wake a lot this year, that was the final straw for me, just getting picked apart by a pathetic Pittsburgh team in the second half the other night. Uh, can't back them right now. I'm done with them for now. Problem is, Georgia Tech laying eight and a half on the road. Man, that's a steep number, but probably I'd have to. Take Georgia Tech or nothing at all. What do you think, Connor? I'm passing, but I lean Georgia Tech. Couldn't take Wake again after what I saw the other day. Yeah, I'm surprised a little bit at the money Wakes took a lot. I mean, and now that it's down to this low, I like Georgia Tech. I think they pound them. Man, I've been great with Wake. We were on that run with them, and I have faded them the last three. The last two, sorry. The Clemson, I was surprised. That's where it all it really got, got shook. They only scored 39 at home. But against Tech and Pittsburgh, I had pit. Ah, it is a senior night, senior day. That's why I'm a little bit. But I'm going to have a small look with Georgia Tech here uh, that it's down. Yeah, maybe it goes down to eight. I don't know. It's been a, a lot of a lot of money on on Wake. So not one I love, a top play, but small look on on Georgia Tech here. All right, we got Cal Poly and Cal Santa Barbara. Dun 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 dun. That was the theme song of that old soap opera from the eighties and nineties on NBC, Santa Barbara. There we go. Santa Barbara, nineteen and a half, twenty point home favorites. Ian watching Santa Barbara. One twenty nine. Oh, not not me at that age. No, clicking through. Yeah, I just mean. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Ah, uh, geez, Cruz, Cruz Costello and all those guys, uh, the characters. Oh, I know it. Uh, I shouldn't, but I do. Uh, yeah, I mean, in this game, uh, Santa Barbara, damn good basketball team, no question. I mean, if they're not representing the Big West in the uh, uh, tournament, I would be shocked. Uh, Cal Poly is horrible, but this late in the season, I don't like laying 20. I either take points of this magnitude or I pass. I just don't know if I've got much confidence right now in Cal Poly here, so – uh, not a game I'm involved in. What about you, Connor? Cal Poly and UCSB. Yeah, I'm not involved either. 20 is just too much. It's just like you just said, I want to take 20 uh, instead of lay it. And I have no trust in them. So it'd be Santa Barbara, but not at 20. Just total pass on to the next one. All right. Next up, we've got, uh, let me just see here. Uh, UAB, North Texas, great game in the conf in Conference USA, two of the top teams. Uh, we got North Texas, five-and-a-half-point home favorites, 127 the total uh, in this game. The Blazers, I'm telling you what, they have come on strong. They've played some solid basketball. So is North Texas, but I thought this game should be closer to pick them, to be honest with you, than North Texas. I like North Texas. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Coslin's done a great job there. Uh, they got a good coach. They've got a very, very good uh, team overall experienced the UAB is really good themselves and they're coming off a bad game against UTSA uh, in their last game 96 79 kind of like them though in a bounce back type situation uh, such as this uh, North Texas has been solid at home but you know you're talking about five five and a half point home favorites against a team that I think can match up well with them uh, is every is closer to e much closer to even than this point spread uh, would indicate uh, UAB, uh, you look at uh, recent – they've been pretty solid from an ATS standpoint, uh, UAB uh, in recent games. Uh, I think there's some things that point here a little bit toward the Blazers here. I think we have a close game. I like the five-and-a-half here with UAB. Uh, what do you think, Connor? UAB, North Texas. Yeah, this was a good one. This is a back-to-back, -back too. They're going to play tomorrow. So that's another reason I'm going to stay off. I think North Texas is better. But I think the, that that five and a half, North Texas is a team I like taking points, maybe pick them real tight. I think five and a half is a little bit of a stretch, um, but not enough. I don't love UAB. It's on the road. I'm going to pass. I'm going to see how today's game goes, maybe get on tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. So it was it was one I I think Texas, North Texas is a little bit better, but I don't want to lay five and a half today. All right. Next game on the uh, slate as we uh, move on down the card, we've got. Um... Let's see. Uh, Old Dominion, Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky, seven-point home favorites, 136 the total in this one. Uh, this is my pick to win the West, uh, the Conference USA tournament next week. Uh, I think they are Western Kentucky. 
Uh, they've been marvelous this season, uh, 17 and five overall record. Uh, you know, I know they've had a couple of uh, speed bumps, but boy, not many. Uh, Tavion Hollingsworth, Charles Bassey, uh, you know, inside outside combination, lethal, uh, just an outstanding team. They were sleepwalking a little against Florida International their last game, but when they picked it up, when they had to pick it up, they did uh, to win that game by 12. Uh, Old Dominion on the road. Uh, they did beat UAB on the road outright, but lost to them in the first game. Barely beat Charlotte in overtime. Uh, lost to Rice in, a t in two road games. They've been very good at home. They've been not quite as good on the road. I think Western Kentucky could win this game and maybe extend the margin late. You look at what Western Kentucky's uh, been able to do. Uh, they had the little pause uh, in their season, uh, and, and they struggled in that first game back against Houston. Uh, but, boy, they romped Florida International before the Houston game, before the pause. They had won back-to-back -back games against a good Rice team on their home court, including a 23-point home win. Seven, you're not going to get this kind of number. Usually Western Kentucky in conference play, they're laying nine, ten, oftentimes double digits. I'll take Western Kentucky here, minus seven. You're not going to get them this cheap on their home floor very often, especially in conference play. Uh, what do you think, C-Mac? ODU, Western Kentucky. I agree. I like Western Kentucky here. Just like you said, I think the number's low enough here at seven and a half. I think they're the better team. They played better all year and the most consistent out of these two. Old Dominion, not very good on the road um, and just not very good all year. I haven't, you know, really been on the Monarchs too much all, all season. So I'm with you here. I got to look with uh, Western Kentucky minus seven and a half. All right, good stuff. Next up, uh, we've got, uh, as we move on down the card, Tarleton State, UT, Rio Grande Valley. Uh, we've got uh, Rio Grande, four and a half point home favorites, 132 the total in this game. Tarleton State, one of those teams that's one actually one of the better defensive teams in this conference. If they could only get some consistency shooting the basketball, then they'd be, then they'd be all set. But that's been the uh, issue at times this year for Tarleton State. This is a perfect situation where you've got a defense and a slower paced team like Tarleton uh, against a better offensive team and a faster paced team like Rio Grande Valley. So it's that clash of styles going on here. I do lean slightly because Rio Grande Valley being the home team slightly to the game going over the total. I think they have that chance maybe to dictate the pace a little bit better. But you look at Tarleton, they've been keeping games lower scoring. You've seen games in the one, below 120s in the 120s consistently with this team. So I don't know if I love that over uh, uh, lean, and it's just a lean for me. But uh, I actually lean a little to Tarleton here uh, as the underdog as well. So uh, lean Tarleton for me, plus four and a half. What do you think here, Connor? Yeah, I'd lean Tarleton too. I think them catching points here is the way to go. I've been on a lot of Tarleton unders, and they've worked out. This one's close. I think it's right there. It's a tough one. It's so low. Rio Grande wants to get up and down. So I, I with you, it could get over. I'm going to stay off uh, the total. But, yeah, I definitely uh, would lean with Tarleton State catching the four and a half. All right. Next up on the uh, regular season board, we'll get to the conference tournament games after that. CS Fullerton, UC San Diego. Uh, we've got UCSD, two and a half point home favorites, 149. The total I'd rather... I'll be talking about UCSD than PTSD uh, right now. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> not funny. I know. Not funny, Ian. I get it. Bad job. All right. So, yes, yeah, UC San Diego, two and a half, three-point home favorites, uh, 149, uh, the total in this one. I'm, I'm a little surprised that San Diego's not favored and favored by two and a half, three. Fullerton, uh, I don't know. Fullerton, to me, has been capable at times stepping up uh, away from home. Uh, you look at their uh, results when they're on the road this season. Eight and, uh, let me see, yeah, two and two uh, straight uh, against the spread uh, on the road here. Uh, I think it's just for a UCSD team that's been kind of up and down the Tritons this year. Remember, Tritons are in Division One for the first time, and they're coming into this game one and five straight up their last six games, and the only win was a one-point overtime win against uh, Riverside. That's it. So you're talking about a team that's in six games, won one game, won, won one game by a single point. That's not a team that should be laying two and a half, three right now, period. So I like Fullerton here. Give me CS Fullerton plus three, the Titans. Uh, in this one. Uh, C-Mac, what do you think? C.S. Fullerton, UCSD. In agreement, you you just hit what I was going to say. They haven't beat anybody. They just came to Division One, and, you know, one was the only one was that overtime one-point win. 
no way do I want to lay it with San Diego. So I'd look to Fullerton take the two and a half. They might win this game outright. So I, that's the only side I'd be on here. All right. Next up, we've got Utah Valley, Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon, nine point home favorites, 138, 138 and a half the total in this game. I like the dog. I like the over in this game. I like Utah Valley to me is a good underdog bet. They're very good offensively. They push pace. Uh, Grand Canyon and the Antelopes are a great team, no question. They've, they've actually had a very good bubbling program under the radar here in the WAC for the last couple of seasons. Uh, they could have been a tournament team, but they always you know, fell just short in the conference tournament. They're a good basketball team, Grand Canyon. Lots of experience, too. Uh, but to me, I'm looking at this game as just a few too many points. Utah Valley's more than capable, and I think they get a little bit. And Grand Canyon's one of those teams that they can slow it down and they can get some pace going. Uh, if they want to. They don't mind playing either style. So uh, I think this game goes over the 138, reasonable total, and I like Utah Valley here, plus nine. Uh, Connor, what's your thoughts here, Utah Valley, Grand Canyon? Yeah, this is one I looked at right away. Uh, I've seen a few people that look like they like Grand Canyon, and I like them, but they haven't beat anybody, really, by number. They played well against some teams at a conference early on in the year. Uh, like San Francisco, they lost by three, Arizona State. But Utah Valley's took care of business. I think it was too many points as well. This one kind of stuck out to me, so stood out to me. Um, I like the nine as well. And both teams get up and down, I think, in the 70s. And I'm, I think this total was a little low at 138, 138 and a half. So I'm in agreement with you. I like Not only I like the nine, I like the over here as well. All right, liking the nine and liking the over here. Uh, in uh, this one. All right, next up, Seattle, Cal Baptist. Cal Baptist, three and a half point home favorites, 149 the total. This is another overplay for me. They do teams that just do not get stops consistently on the defensive end of the floor. Seattle, moderate tempo. Cal Baptist does push pace a little bit. Uh, should be a free flowing game. Tough teams to trust. I don't love laying three and a half, four with Cal Baptist, but Seattle's been one of those teams that it seems like when I take that, I took them once against Portland and won. And Portland, of course, is just beyond awful. Thank God their season's over now. But uh, nevertheless, uh, yeah, uh, Seattle, uh, been tricky to trust them, but I'd still lean a little to the Seattle side at three and a half, four, but I like the over. That's what I'm sticking with uh, in this one, over 148 and a half. What do you think, Connor? Seattle, Cal Baptist. Yeah, I want nothing to do with this one. Uh, Seattle early on in the year, I played a few times, and they had struggled to score. Now that they've been in conference, they played a little bit better lately. Uh, of course, against teams like this, they should. It's tough. I'd maybe take the points with them. I, this game, I, I just crossed off as well. The total's pretty high. I think it gets there, but I passed on that as well. All right, next up, we've got um, New Mexico State and Dixie State. Uh, New Mexico State, 12-point road favorites, 139 the total uh, in this game. Uh, New Mexico State, in Dixie State, I like taking them when they face someone that's pretty bad in the conference or a bottom you know, half of the conference team. Like I had success taking them at home when they uh, played you know, some of these lower-rung uh, conference uh, teams. But when you're talking about the best of the best, there's been some ugly results here uh, for Dixie State when they've stepped up in class. I mean, you start to go down uh, their schedule, and this is another first-timer, uh, in Division One basketball, the uh, Trailblazers of Dixie State, you know they've been able to handle you know Tarleton State, and they've been able to they got they got they got uh, uh, a home win against a bad Seattle team. But then you look at some of these other home games; they get drubbed by Grand Canyon twice. You know I don't know if they're going to be able to match up well here with New Mexico State. You know going into this game, New Mexico State's always you know one of the top teams here uh, in the WAC, uh, and it's more of the same this year. And they've been covering these some of these bigger numbers lately. Rio Van Grally, uh, Rio Grand Valley in their last game, uh, they win sixty nine to fifty one. They beat Tarleton State by twenty seven. You know this has been a team that's been putting the the, the beat down on some of these teams of late uh, in conference play. Uh, it's, so it's tough. I mean, uh, they putting the beat down. They should be able to really handle Dixie State. Question is, do you want to lay twelve? I don't. It's a game I'm passing on. What do you think, Connor? Yeah, they're the they're the way better team here. But laying twelve, they've played better of late. But I I don't think they've been that great. They have the talent, New Mexico State. But yeah, this is one. 
Uh, if Dixie, they just yeah, it's a step up for them. I'd really like to take the twelve here. I just some, I just can't get there. Um, that'd be my lean though, is taking the twelve here. Um, but I'm gonna pass. All right, next game on the slate. It's the final on the main board here: Colorado State, Nevada, Mountain West action. Nevada one point home favorites, one forty four and a half the total uh, in this one. Uh, we'll see how this one uh, plays out, but uh, you know I'm impartial to Colorado State. Uh, I like the team six and three on the road, uh, five and four against the spread on the road. So they've, they've found ways to win games away from home. They're in a good zone right now, five straight wins and albeit all bad teams. So you got to factor that in Wyoming, Air Force, New Mexico, but five straight wins. It's not like Nevada though, you know, at times has been up and down a little bit as well. They just got drubbed by Utah state back to back games. Now they have beaten UNLV and Boise state at home. So they have had some nice home victories, I, I still think Colorado State, you give me a chance, Steve Alford against Nico Medved. I think Nico Medved can win that matchup. Alford's a good recruiter. Alford's not a great X's and O's guy. He just isn't. You know, he wasn't that way at New Mexico, wasn't that way at UCLA. Uh, Colorado State, pl plus one. I think they could. I think they can find a way to win this game. Uh, Colorado State for me. What do you think, Connor? This one's tricky. I lean Colorado State. I lean the over. I like the over a little bit. Um, as long as you're not playing Air Force or San Jose State, both these teams are regularly in the 70s and 80s. Colorado State um, can shoot it, especially if they're hot, and UNR's defense is okay, and they can score. Uh, it's at 145, but I still think it can get there because these teams are regularly, in this, like I said, in the 70s, low 70s to 80s. So I, I lean towards the over. I haven't bet it yet think i might tonight but that'd be my only look and i lean colorado state but i just don't love it enough not not enough edge um to bet this one here all right so there we go that is the uh regular season games on the schedule let's go now to conference tournament the rest of the show this is the fun stuff atlantic 10 quarterfinal there's one more game that hasn't tipped off it's george mason against davidson 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. Davidson, five and a half point home favorites, 130 and a half the total in this game. I really don't think George Mason's all that good. Look, they struggled with a shorthanded, depth-shy George Washington team for extended stretches yesterday. They pulled away late, and they pulled away big time late. They turned like a, a game that was like a two, four-point game with five minutes left, and they ended up winning by like 16. You know, So they pulled away late in that game. But we're seeing now a clear sign that these teams on the second of the back-to-backs, they're having a tough time. Look, I mean, earlier today, St. Bonaventure runs Duquesne out of the gym. St. Louis just blows out UMass. And right now in progress, our Dayton look isn't starting off too hot because VCU's up 21-8 to eight, uh, over Dayton right now. So these teams that played yesterday, they look like they're, they're hitting a wall. Physically, they're not shooting the ball well. They're turning the ball over a lot. Uh, this is concerning, and... You're going to turn the ball over and give this efficient, smooth motion offense of Davidson ish uh, uh, good looks at the net. You're going to pay for it. I think the price is reasonable here enough to lay it with Davidson here, minus five and a half. Better team. Again, we're seeing these teams struggle on the back to back in this tournament so far. Uh, let's go with Davidson here against George Mason, minus five and a half. What do you think, Connor? Yeah, I have a small lean with Davidson. I haven't got there yet. I think they're the better team, but this is kind of that number that I haven't liked Davidson all year. They just had a good win against VCU. Um, played St. Bonaventure, lost both, lost by three, and the first one by 11. I like Davidson. I lean with them. I just don't love the five and a half. I think they get this cover. Um, and I think I get to the window. I'm just a little cautious of it. But they're like, you're fresher as you're seeing these games. Uh, the team that didn't play that's fresh is playing well. So um, it'd be Davison or, or nothing here. Yeah, I didn't think it would be this pronounced that we would see me, this mean, kind of, that this kind of domination in the second game against the teams that played yesterday. Because a lot of times the teams that play yesterday, they're actually in a better shape. You know, they've had, they had the game yeah. under their belt. They're used to the surroundings. And it's usually the third game in three days. Yes, yeah, and, and that sets here. in. Yeah, exactly, in these conference tournaments. And yet here today in the A-10, you're seeing Duquesne just wilt on the second of back-to-backs, UMass as well, and Dayton's not started off well against VCU, so maybe trouble for George Mason, you know, if that pattern continues uh, when they play Davidson later today. All right, next game, we go to the Missouri Valley 
conference tournament now. Northern Iowa taking on Drake, uh, the Bulldogs, six and a half point home uh, favorites, I should say, in St. Louis, neutral court, of course, 139 and a half the total. The total's been bet down heavily. Of course, uh, Hemp Hill, uh, the best score player for Drake, still out. Uh, but Northern Iowa, I don't buy into them. They did win, although they didn't cover against Illinois State. Illinois State just snuck inside the number against Northern Iowa. A lot of people seem to think Drake's vulnerable. Drake's vulnerable, and they're beating this drum that Drake is now not what they used to be. I don't buy that. I mean, even without Hemphill, it's a big loss. They've managed to steady the ship again and put in some good results. I'm not on the dog here, Northern Iowa. I would look toward um, Drake here in this game, minus six and a half. Not going to bet it at this number, but if I see fives, six or below start to show up on Drake, then I'm going to be buying uh, the Drake side at that number. What do you think, C-Mac? Northern Iowa, Drake. Yeah, I lean Drake. I think they can get it done. Northern Iowa's played better lately. Um, they're not very good on the road. I mean, this is a, a neutral game, but right? So I lean Drake. It, like you said, I want it down a little bit more to five. Uh, I think they get it done. It's just something about it. I It's just I don't know. It's just tricky. It's just this game today is kind of it's making me uh, feel weird. But I, I lean Drake with the six and a half. All right, lean and Drake here with the uh, uh, minus six and a half. Next up in the Missouri Valley, the final game of the day, quarterfinal action. Uh, we've got uh, Valpo against Missouri State. Uh, the Bears seven seven and a half point home uh, favorites. Uh, One thirty four the total uh, in this game. Uh, I think this is the one underdog you might be able to latch on to today uh, in the Missouri Valley Tournament. Valpo has been a sneaky little team down the stretch here, starting to be competitive, be feisty. Missouri State's the better squad. I don't know if they win this game by eight or more, though. Valpo's been pretty decent in recent games. Uh, they've turned up the intensity on the defensive end of the court. You know, they've got a respectable uh, point spread record down the stretch. It started out really badly for them. Uh, no question. But you look at these teams as they get later into the season, start to cover numbers a little bit more. You're seeing that uh, from Valpo uh, down the stretch, covered three of their last four. In fact, six and four ATS, their last 10. Uh, Missouri State, certainly a formidable team. They had gone on an eight-game uh, winning streak prior to losing at Evansville uh, in their season finale uh, prior to this tournament starting. Uh, you look at the uh, two regular season meetings way back in January, back to back, and Missouri State won both of them comfortably by double digits. But Valpo was in a world of hurt back then, was not a good team at all uh, back then, struggling mightily. They, they've been better since then. They've been more competitive. They've turned things up. Last five games at the defensive end of the basketball court, Valpo's only allowing 60 points per game, you know, and 42% shooting their last uh, five games. They've turned it up on defense, and that matters. Defense travels in these conference tournaments. Missouri State, to me, obviously is, is the uh, better team, but Valpo's been better in a lot of areas enough that in a neutral court like this, getting seven and a half with them is a, th is a bet I think I'm going to make here in this game. So Valpo, for me, at plus seven and a half uh, against Missouri State. Uh, C-Mac, what's your take on this game? Yeah, Valpo's been, you know, down the stretch here the last few weeks and been a lot more competitive, uh, at least covering some games. I don't trust them. If I, I think Missouri State's better, but I don't want to lay it with them. <laughs> I don't want to lay seven. Some is just I don't feel great about it. If I had to play this one, uh, three bet, I would I'd go with Valpo uh, in the spot. All right, next uh, – actually, we we're going to switch now to another uh, conference here as we go through the uh, conference tournaments. It's SOCON time, Southern Conference. We've got Western Carolina, the Citadel. Western Carolina, three-point favorites. This tournament in Asheville, North Carolina, total 156-and-a-half here. Western Carolina got a key uh, – one of their top scorers back a couple games ago, and they have transformed. Remember, they were lifeless. They were terrible offensively. They were just losing games, getting blown out. Now, all of a sudden, they've perked up, and they're starting to put it together, the Western Carolina Catamounts. Uh, they've had a couple of nice performances uh, down the stretch of the regular season, and this is the kind of stuff you like to look for late in the season in college basketball. These teams that find it, look what they've done their last two games since they uh, got their full uh, complement of starters back, including one of their leading scorers, 81-80. They beat Greensboro as 14-point dogs. They went outright as dogs against Mercer, 85-61. to 61. 
They get the one guy back, Connor, and they go from 56, yeah. 56, struggling to find the bottom of the well, to 81 and 85 in their last two games. Both victories, both point spread covers. I think they ride it into this game against Citadel. Citadel, again, this is a neutral court. Anything away from home, whether it's on the road, whether it's a neutral court, the Citadel has struggled. I don't think it's the, the numbers cheap with what we've seen out of Western Carolina here. I like them minus three, and I think the over can get there. It's a low number for a Citadel game, and the Western Carolina offense is percolating again. They're shooting is back to where uh, it should be. So I like the uh, Western Carolina side, and I like over 156.5 in this game as well. What are your thoughts, C-Mac? Yeah, getting them back has got them to scoring, you know, in the high 70s, low 80s, like they were with them in. Uh, you know, like if you look back to January back, back there, I'm with you. I think I got to I got to lean to Western Carolina as well. I think the total gets there. I just don't love it. Uh, I know it's a little low, um, but I, I don't know if I'll get there on the total. But I definitely uh, will lean here. Western Carolina. I think they can cover this short one. Three and a half. All right. We got Samford and Mercer, the other SoCon tournament game in the uh, first round. Uh, taking place tonight. Uh, Mercer, seven and a half point home favorites, 147, 148 the total uh, in this one. It's been a crazy odd season for both of these teams. And, uh, you know, Mercer definitely started out the uh, SOCON season playing some pretty good basketball. Uh, it's been a little bit more erratic for them down the stretch, just uh, three and three to finish the season. Uh, they beat Samford twice during the regular season, but only in overtime. And then you start to look at uh, Mercer's wins. Other than Citadel, you know, they beat ETSU by seven, beat Chattanooga in overtime by four. Again, seven-point wins against Samford, one at home, one at Samford. Uh, they lost to ETSU and Watford and Greensboro before that, and they lost by Fer 10 to Furman. Uh, they lost by 24 in their last game at Western Carolina. You know, other than the 88-52 win against Citadel, not a lot of evidence that this team can win games by margin. I like Samford a little bit here, plus seven and a half getting points. I know Samford is, is a team that's, you know, really fallen on hard times. I get it. The last two games, they've been ravaged by injuries and blown out 85-56 uh, uh, and 78-64. But, you know, at least it looks like they're going to be a little bit closer to full strength uh, in this game. And again, they Hung in there with uh, Mercer in both games. Yeah, Mercer won both of them, but both of them equal seven-point margins. If you lose by seven here, you get the money if you back Samford. So I do lean a little to Samford, and I also like the game to go over the total. You're talking about two games in the regular season that got to the 150s. Yeah. Mercer plays with pace. I like the dog, and I like the over here with Samford and Mercer. What do you think, Connor? Yeah, I like the the over here as well. Yeah, Samford's been up and down all year. I took them. They covered against Mercer. And I told you, I bet Mercer's been, I thought, one of the better teams, but they are up and down. Uh, they just got beat down by Western Carolina. Um, I like here. It's not my fair look, but I think they stayed it twice. They know this team. They lost by seven. I think they know, hey, we can play against these guys and hang in here. I definitely have a lean. I like the over and, and lean catching the seven and a half of Samford. All right, next game on the uh, schedule here. We've got Georgia Southern, Arkansas State. We go to the Sun Belt first round in Pensacola, Florida. These games are Arkansas State, one and a half point favorites, 137 the total uh, in this game. Total looks a little low to me in this one. Uh, mid 130s, especially for Arkansas State, uh, seems a little bit uh, cheap when it comes to maybe the over in this game. And I think Georgia Southern can get the victory here. Uh, Georgia Southern had a nice win to finish their season, snapped a three-game losing streak, but they've been pretty competitive uh, throughout the uh, course of the Sun Belt season. Arkansas State's kind of in a bit of a funk down the stretch. They lost by five to Texas State. Uh, they lost to UT Arlington in back-to-back -back games down the stretch as well. Uh, Georgia Southern, you look at it as well in terms of uh, defensive ability. Uh, they picked it up on that end of the floor, in fact, better defensive numbers slightly than our uh, than Arkansas State so better defensive numbers better form Arkansas State slumping I like Georgia Southern here getting the points I thought this game should be pick them I even thought Georgia Southern could be a one-point favorite here not to be uh one and a half I and mean, they were even plus two earlier today it's down to one and a half I agree with the move I like Georgia Southern here plus one and a half and over the total as well C-Mac how about you yeah I think it could get over but uh I got to lean Georgia Southern as well. 
Um, I've played them a few times this year. I think they're the better team all the way around. So definitely a lean with Georgia Southern. All right, we've got Monroe and South Alabama here. South Alabama, 5.0 favorites. Uh, the total in this one uh, right now currently minus uh, 134 uh, in this game. Uh, South Alabama, uh, UL Monroe has been dreadful. There's no way I would back them here. No way. Uh, just been absolutely dreadful here. Uh, maybe a team that's just you know looking for their season to end uh, at this point with just how uh, dismal it's gone. Uh, you know this team's just won uh, seven and eighteen on the season. It's been a really tough go for them uh, of late. Uh, I think this is a game South Alabama can get. South Alabama lost two games in a row to end the regular season, but again they had won eight in a row before that. And it's who you play. They played Georgia uh, Georgia State. I mean, the Georgia State Panthers, one of the top teams in the Sun Belt, you can't penalize South Alabama for losing uh, those two games, uh, not in my opinion. Uh, this is, I think, a team that can bounce back, more than capable of it, and, and something uh, uh, as well uh, that you want to maybe keep in mind here, better free throw shooting for South Alabama. That could that could show up here, and yeah. certainly when you look at these teams on the offensive end of the floor, uh, there's a lot more weaponry, ULM struggles to put the ball in the hoop consistently. You might see that again uh, here uh, in this game uh, tonight. So for me, I'm looking at this one as South Alabama can win this game and maybe pull away to get the cover as well. So I'm on South Bama minus five. Uh, what do you think here, Connor? I am too. Uh, Monroe's played a little bit better lately. They got a few wins, but I think it's doable. I'm a little bit weary of it at five, but I like South Alabama as well. I think they, uh, as long as they go in there, like you said, I think they're the better shooting team. Monroe can have trouble at times scoring. So I think they could shoot it better. And you alluded to better on the free throw line. So I definitely like South Alabama minus five here. All right. Next game on the uh, slate here, we've got um, Arkansas Little Rock against App State. App State 2.0 favorites, 133 and a half the total. Yeah, definitely candidate for most disappointing team in this conference is Arkansas yeah. Little Rock. I mean, what yep. has happened to them is just ridiculously disappointing. This is a team wow. that was experienced, shooting, defense. They had it all to be uh, to win this conference, and I think now they're getting bounced here in this very first game by App State. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's they're, they're quitting, they're folding the tent, but, boy, they had lost uh, seven in a row. They did beat UL Lafayette. Uh, in the last game, but I think for Lafayette, that was kind of a game where they were, you know, not taking it seriously. They had locked up their seed already in the conference tournament. I don't know if that's a sign of a bounce back. Uh, App State, to me, can win this game. They haven't, they struggled as well down the stretch as well. Uh, but to me, there's more question marks with uh, Arkansas Little Rock. And then when you start to look at the actual matchup here, App State's got better uh, uh, offensive numbers. Uh, than Arkansas Little Rock. They're a better free-throw shooting team, and I really monitor that. Free-throw shooting is important in these conference tournament games. Uh, that could be an edge for App State. I think they win the game. Uh, instead of minus two, I took them minus 130 uh, on the money line, but I like App State to get the win here and, and send uh, the, send Little Rock home packing and make them pay here for a, just a disappointing season uh, on their part. What do you think here, C-Mac? Little Rock, App State. I agree. Little Rock. Totally disappointing. I took them once or twice this year, a while ago, and that was the last time. They just lose. They lose against the spread. They've only won a couple ATS. I mean, they are really bad. I don't know. I'm not buying it that they beat Lafayette, you know, on a back-to-back -back in the second game. Um, and finally got against the spread cover, too. I mean, it was a pick -em. They won by 10. I got to go uh, App State here, laying the short number. Um, at two and a half, give me them. I think they bounce them as well. All right, fourth and final Sun Belt tournament game uh, is Troy and UT Arlington. We've got Arlington seven point home favorites here. Uh, total in this game right now. Um, I wish I had it. I just lost my screen there, but uh, yeah, we'll get it for you here in a second. Total around one thirty-seven, I believe, in this game or one thirty-three. Sorry, uh, with Arlington and Troy. You know, Arlington's definitely picked it up down the stretch, and this is a team that's been consistently a really good Sun Belt team. You remember a couple of years ago when uh, Scott Cross was the coach, there was uh, some really good teams. They played, you know, reasonably better down the uh, stretch. They beat Arkansas State back to back to start uh, finish the season. However, I don't know if they should be laying seven here. I mean, the number's been bet up. Look at the Arlington as favorites here. Three point favorite to Arkansas State, losing overtime. Four point favorite at Arkansas State. 
only win by one. Nine-point favorite at home against Monroe, a bad Monroe team. They only win by seven. Eight-and-a-half-point favorite again versus Monroe, and they win by six. Five-point favorite against Arkansas State. They win by two. Not a lot of wins by margin for this Arlington team. Now, Troy's on a, sc- on a slide, seven straight losses in a row. But I'd side with them here at plus seven, even with that those struggles that they've had. You know, let's keep in mind the competition. Georgia Southern, solid team. South Alabama, solid team. Georgia Southern, uh, again, solid team. Uh, Georgia State, excellent team. You know, so, so they, they've had some losses against some uh, the better competition here uh, in the conference. And even though they've lost seven in a row, conference tournament time is always that time to wipe the slate clean. And sometimes as long as you get that team saying, hey, we've struggled down the stretch, it's the first game of our conference tournament. Let's go out there, you know, do what we can, have some fun, relaxed, loose. I think you're going to get that kind of uh, uh, performance from Troy. It could allow, allow them to hang around here in this game. So I just think I don't trust Arlington laying points more than I distrust Troy. So I like Troy a little bit here, plus seven uh, against Arlington. What's your thoughts here, C-Mac? Yeah, I think seven's a little bit too much. You alluded to they, you know, had a tough time covering numbers. I think they're the better team. I don't, I'm not going to look towards the side. I'm going to look towards the total. I like the under here. These teams are both under teams. I know Arlington has had a few overs um, going back, but they got back. I see this game more like 64-58, you know, something like that, rock fight. So I lean towards this uh, under 133. All right, uh, we uh, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, these are two teams that can go into like three, four minute uh, scoring droughts. droughts. Uh, we have seen that routinely from both of them at times this season, so it wouldn't shock me to see more of that here. Ohio Valley tournament next up, semifinal action. Uh, these teams one step away from the championship game and two step two wins away from being in the NCAA tournament for sure via the auto bid. We've got Jacksonville State and Belmont in the first semifinal. Belmont, seven and a half point favorites, 146 the total. I'm riding this Jacksonville State bus one more time tonight. Uh, I know it's Belmont. I know they've been phenomenal. I know Nick Musinski's back and healthy, and it makes them a better basketball team. Uh, But, boy, I'll tell you what, when you look at Jacksonville State and what Ray Harper can do to get the most out of this team, he's just amazing. And he's always got Jacksonville State, it seems, in this position where they get at least to a semifinal you know, in this uh, conference tournament most years, you know, and it happened again uh, this year. So you're looking at it as, wow. I mean, Jacksonville State playing good ball. It was a great win against Murray State. You'll worry with the game going to overtime a little bit that Jacksonville State could wear down later in this game, but they have a great defense. They have, you know, they contest shots. They, they have a decent rebounding team. And the one concern is that second half, they their legs give out, and that's where Belmont could pull away. So I'm going to split this one up between the first half and the full game on Jacksonville state, just to be safe, you know, just in case this is a team uh, that has those issues wearing down a bit in the second half. So Jacksonville state, I believe first half is plus four and a half uh, and then full game is plus seven and a half. But I think they hang around here against this Belmont team. This team just doesn't go away, you know, in games. And I think they can give Belmont a battle here tonight in a semifinal setting. What do you think here, uh, Connor? If as good as Belmont is, can Jacksonville State give them a game tonight? I think so. I love it. I'm on the Jacksonville State train with you. Um, They got a lot of fight. They lost by seven to them, um, and they lost by, what, three or four this year. Four, 63-59. I think this one is, is tight as well. So I think it's way too many points. I got eight. There's still one eight out here. Uh, like William Hill, mostly seven and a half. I think they're in this game. I think it's too many. Um, definitely stay in the number, I think. So give me Jacksonville State in the plus eight. Seven and a half. All right. Good stuff. Uh, and I, I, I'm i not involved in the total. Uh, it's I'm, uh, If it drops, maybe a little lean to the over, but I'd need a little bit more than the number. Yeah. That uh, there's a total I like in this next game. Eastern Kentucky, Moorhead State, Moorhead State, one and a half, two point uh, favorites here, I should say, in uh, Evansville, 144 the total. The total's been bet up. I got 142 in this game. It's 144. 
But hey, how can you not take Eastern Kentucky over? It did stay under finally last night against Murray State in that wild or against uh, uh, Austin P uh, last night in their game. But I think they get back over the total here. Uh, Moorhead State, uh, very good defensive team, but Eastern Kentucky's getting their offense, getting their shots, executing at a very high level offensively, regardless uh, of who the opponent's been. And like I say, they've cashed over tickets. I believe nine and two they are a nine and two over run for the Colonels uh, in their last eleven games going into this one. I took Austin P last night, paid the price for it, so I'm not going against Eastern Kentucky again. I was impressed that they, you know, controlled that game most of the way, and then they put away and made up uh, Austin P late uh, and made all the key plays. And they're a red hot basketball team that is uh, right now seven and one straight up, six uh, and uh, seven and one straight up. Uh, six and two against the spread uh, in their last eight games. Uh, you look at the head-to-head -head meeting this year against uh, Moorhead State. Uh, Eastern they split. Moorhead State won one of them. Eastern Kentucky won one of them. Uh, I think you got a situation here where you're probably going to get another very close game again. Maybe if the number goes up a bit, uh, I become interested in Eastern Kentucky. But right now, it's in a good spot. It's a coin flip. Moorhead is the better defensive team but Eastern Kentucky is the better offensive team. So I'm passing on the side. For me, it's just a look over the total here in this game. And I think Moorhead has hinted that they may try to play fast, faster, even though they don't normally do it, because they want to tire out Eastern Kentucky, who played an overtime game uh, last night. So that's why I think even though this total looks high for Moorhead, it does look very low for Eastern. And I think they're going to run off missed shots tonight a little bit more. Moorhead State trying to tire out the team that played last night, that being EKU, and played uh, a game that went down to the wire as well against Austin P. So uh, I like over the total here. Even at 144 now, it's gone up, but still a little value here to bet that over. What do you think, C-Mac? Yeah, it's kind of steamed a little too much. I like to just now that it's up to 143 and a half, eh, I might stay off. It's a lot. Yeah, more address it. I like this Eastern Kentucky team um a little bit here i would i would take them take the two or or plus one and a half or just money line if you like them if you don't want the one and a half two i think it's a tight game you know the games were pretty close i think they're very very similar i mean style where the game will be tight i just don't see a blowout i think this one's really close so in a game like that i want the bucket the point point and a half maybe it gets to two um so i'd be on eastern kentucky here I'll ride with them. all right Lean into Eastern Kentucky there. Uh, and I, yeah, I'll be on East. If I get two for sure, two and a half, I'm in. Uh, I'm locked in on Eastern Kentucky yeah. if I get that number. Even if it gets to like two it. across the board, mm -hmm. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. It's one and, one and a half. I don't like it. I like that security that if they lose by two, it's a push. So uh, I'm waiting on that, especially every half point matters in these conference tournaments and these neutral court games, you know, even more than it would in a regular season game. All right, we're down to the nitty gritty. Just a couple, four games left, three games left. Uh, San Francisco, Loyola, Marymount. We've got West Coast Conference, second round action here. San Francisco taking money, one and a half point favorites, 137 the total. San Francisco's got the talent that maybe last night was a wake-up call, but I'm going to have to see it again here against Loyola Marymount. I mean, it, San Diego was atrocious in that game last night. Brutal they were uh, offensively. They do have the talent to, because they underachieve based on the, the quality of players that they have, the Dons, for much of the regular yeah. season. Maybe they're ready to turn it on, and I think the betting markets sense that, that maybe this team wins a couple games before they bow out here in the tournament. So, I'm staying off the side. It's hard to project that. It's not like Loyola was any great shakes uh, down the stretch themselves. What I do like is the over because Loyola Marymount here has played a little bit quicker this year, not blazing fast tempo, but with the new head coach who came from a system that, you know, played up tempo. He's brought that here to Loyola Marymount and San Francisco got out of their offensive woes last night. So that's a good sign. They had kind of scuffled and underachieved shooting the ball offensively. Not the case last night. Hopefully that can carry over to this game, but I do like over 137 and a half. I think it's low enough. We can get into the one forties here. Uh, what's, what do you think here, Connor with San Fran Loyola Marymount? I think so too. And uh, Loyola has been eight and two towards the over. I've taken a few of these overs lately with them with like BYU and Pepperdine. I've been on those. Um, and I think we can get over 137 and a half. And I like Loyola. I, San Francisco, they beat San Diego. I don't think it was too huge. They were sliding before that. 
Um, Loyola showed me more this year uh, throughout the year. They beat them earlier, 68-60. I think they just have the better team. They got more length. Um, I think they get it done here. I, I take Loyola. You want to take the, the point and a half or just money line? I'll probably just go money line. And, yeah, I definitely lean this over, 137 and a half. All right, the second uh, game in the West Coast Conference Tournament tonight, also a second-round matchup, Santa Clara Pacific. Pacific two-and-a-half point home favorites, 136-and-a-half the total uh, in this game. Uh, I think the number's cheap enough. I'm going to lay it with Pacific here. Uh, I mean, a really good defensive <laughs> team. I mean, Santa Clara, like last night they were tied with Portland. I know. You know I watch it. I watch the whole game. they struggled offensively a, a little bit in that game against Portland too at times. So, you know, to me, or and defensively, they were awful uh, as yeah. well, Santa Clara. And, and that's a concern for me uh, going into this matchup here against Pacific, who are a, a good defensive team. Pacific struggles to shoot the basketball, score the basketball. But to me, Santa Clara, I don't know. If you're giving up 86 points and you're giving up 29 and 56 shooting to Portland, that's not good. Okay, that is not good at all. Uh, they're lucky they scored 95 on that hapless Portland defense last night. Uh, but I think it's going to be tougher. Pacific hasn't played yet. They're rested. Santa Clara to play last night. So it's the second of back-to-backs for them. They're not necessarily a phenomenal shooting team by any stretch. You know, they, they score big points against teams that are either bad defensively or play fast, like Pepperdine and Portland. But when they have to play a good, solid, sound defensive team, they're only scoring 50s and 60s. And then you throw in potential fatigue. Your shooting legs aren't there playing the second of back-to-back -back games. I think just asking Pacific to win the game straight up, and because that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take the minus 140 money line instead of minus two and a half, just to win the game straight up. I think Pacific can do that and get the job done. So I like Pacific here uh, in this matchup. What do you think? Second West Coast Conference tournament game tonight, Santa Clara yeah. Pacific. Pacific, no way on Santa Clara. Just no way. I watched them last night. Pacific's rested. I'll lay the two and a half, too. You know, I'm surprised a little money on Santa Clara. I watch them. I see them throughout the year. I don't think they're that great. I mean, yeah, they could win. This game could be close. But I think Pacific's just the better basketball team. So I'll lay the two and a half for Pacific. All right, laying the two and a half with Pacific. And the final conference tournament game. Here we are, the end of the road at Florida Gulf Coast, North Alabama. It's the second of two Atlantic Sun tournament uh, semifinal games. Uh, we've got uh, Florida Gulf Coast two and a half point uh, home favorites or two and a half point favorites, I should say, in this game. Total one thirty seven. Uh, this game is at North Florida Arena, uh, so definitely uh, good stuff indeed. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast, man, that was impressive, knocking off the number two seed Lipscomb yesterday uh, in uh, the quarterfinal round of this tournament. Real impressive win, and I saw it said, "Beware of the artist formerly." known as Dunk City going into this tournament, yeah. that this team could be dangerous and this team could be about ready to go on a little bit of a run. I'm not stepping in front of FGCU here. I, I think they win. This is another game. Instead of laying two and a half, I'll just go minus 140 or so on the money line with Florida Gulf Coast with the Eagles. I think they get the job done. I also think the game goes over the total as well. This is a lower number for their totals. Uh, North Alabama, you know, really had a tough time offensively. They're lucky they shut down North Florida. Uh, yesterday in their tournament victory. Uh, but I think in this game, they can get their shooting going a little bit more. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast is one of those teams that's been uh, in and out of defensive capabilities this year. I think you'll see that here uh, in this game. Of course, the winner is going to take on Liberty uh, in the uh, Atlantic Sun Tournament Championship game. Uh, Liberty will be the overwhelming favorite, obviously. Whoever wins this game, uh, Liberty should probably win this conference tournament. But uh, I am definitely looking in this game. Someone's got to get there, and I think it's going to be Florida Gulf Coast here. So I like them to get the win, and I like over the total as well. C-Mac, what do you think? Florida Gulf Coast, North Alabama. Yeah, they had a big win last night. I don't love them laying two and a half, but that'd be my look. I'm, I don't really like anything about this game, so I'm going to stay off. But I'd lean with them. They looked great last night. Um, like you said, if you want to just – Lay a little more juice and take a money line if you don't want to lay the two and a half. But that'd be my lean is uh, to Gulf Coast. All right, good stuff. Added board, I got nothing. No, uh, There's only a couple on the added board. Sac State, Montana State, Mississippi Valley State. I got nothing on those games. You, you probably, uh, you're shaking your head. I don't think you do yeah. either. Yeah. <laughs> no way. All right, on we go. 
uh, that is, uh, that's the card. We got through regular season conference tournament games. Now tomorrow it's going to, we're not doing every game on the board like we did today, tomorrow. There's just no way to be able to do that. What we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to pick out, you know, a couple of regular season games that are really marquee games. And I'm going to try to focus a lot more on the conference tournaments tomorrow. Uh, that's where my interest is. That's where a lot more of my wagering will be. So we'll only touch on a couple of the regular season games tomorrow. It'll be mostly conference tournament breakdowns on the show tomorrow. Uh, and make sure you join us, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. The show will be that time every day moving forward uh, starting tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. All right, Connor, before we get to best bets, sponsors, what are they saying today? Yeah, everyone, you got to have multiple books. Go to mybookie.ag at promo code PUBSports. You get 50% off your debit or credit. Get 100% off the Bitcoin. Use the Bitcoin. You put 1,000, you get 1,000, or at least minimum of 100. Put 100. They give you 100. Mybookie.ag at promo code PUBSports. And you need to get bulked up for the spring. Go to bulksupplements.com at promo code PUBSports. You get 5 to 10% off your order. Get jacked up. Get all that creatine, all that stuff. Be jacked in the gym. And go to manscaped.com. 20% off your order. Get the tree trimmer 3.0. Keep everything trimmed up. The undercarriage, the hair, everything. Get the ball deodorant, the oils, keep it all freshed up. All the great products at manscaped.com. 20% off promo code PubSports. All right, good stuff. Best bet time. Connor, what do you got for a best bet tonight? Okay. All right. I'm going to go. They've won eight out of nine. Their only loss was a four-point loss. To Belmont, they're hot. Give me Jacksonville State plus seven and a half. That's now that's that's everywhere. I got eight, but seven and a half. Um, and I get it. Some if you like first half too. I saw someone in the chat like as well. You did, Ian. I don't blame you, yep. but I think this is close. They've won eight of nine. They, their only loss was to Belmont in that last nine games, four point loss. I think they keep it close. They're feisty. Uh, give me Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State, my, plus it, seven and a half uh, against Belmont for Connor Max, best bet. And the pressure's on. You know, when you start to get to, on this kind of run that I'm on with the uh, college basketball best bets on this show, 16 and three in the last 19, unbelievable run. Uh, I get more and more pressure on me to keep it going every day. So let's see if we can make it count again. We had Campbell, what a call uh, yesterday, plus two and a half against Radford. They win comfortably. Uh, for my best bet, I'm going to go to. Uh, the SOCON tournament, first round action. Note the start time. It's an hour from now, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. We're going to lay the three with Western Carolina here, minus three against the Citadel. Citadel just doesn't have to have done that. Nothing on the road, nothing in a neutral court uh, environment, nothing away from home. They've been co somewhat competitive at home, and they've had a lot of ugly results on the road. Western Carolina, what can you say? They're fully healthy, and since they did get fully healthy, two great wins in a row against Greensboro and Mercer, outright as underdogs. They're mispriced right now. They are a much different team since they got everybody back. Their offense has come back. They're winning games outright as underdogs against some solid competition, Greensboro and Mercer. Citadel is not even close to those two teams in terms of caliber. I think Western Carolina, the price is cheap. Western Carolina Catamounts, minus three against the like Citadel. It. That is my best bet for the Friday edition of the Pub Sports Radio College Basketball a Closing Time Show. That'll wrap it up. Thank you to everyone for tuning in. A reminder, we're back Saturday and Sunday and every day that there's college basketball action the rest of the season, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific is the start time for the rest of the season with the college basketball closing time show. Uh, make sure you join us tomorrow and beyond at our new time, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. For Connor Mack, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Friday night. Enjoy the games and good luck in college basketball action. And we'll see you again tomorrow on Saturday for another Pub Sports Radio college basketball closing time show. Peace.